Just a few months before the midterm elections, President Biden announced a plan to forgive up to $20,000 in student loan debt per borrower. President Biden announcing his long-awaited plan to forgive student loans for millions of Americans. Hearing from people about uh, about relative fairness in terms of this new announcement. Yeah, there's no way to really fix the notion that it's unfair because for many people it is. And while the beneficiaries are obvious, the costs are more hidden, and any analysis of student loan forgiveness has to consider both of those. I'm Cameron Harwick, professor of economics at SUNY Brockport. Let's break it down. Working and middle class people are for families who need it the most, making under $125,000 a year. If you make more than that, you don't qualify. In economics, there are two steps to analyzing a policy. First, the static analysis. Who benefits and who loses just from the policy itself, and are the benefits worth the costs? And second, the dynamic analysis. How do people change their behavior in response to the policy, and do they change it in productive or unproductive ways? Let's start with a static analysis. Who benefits from student loan forgiveness? Well, the entire point of the program is to benefit former students who have borrowed lots of money for school and haven't paid it back yet. So it's no surprise that a big chunk of the support for this program comes from highly educated people. But those benefits don't come for free. If these borrowers are able to consume more, someone has to consume less. So who is that? That's going to depend on how the forgiveness is funded. If the government raises taxes to pay for it, then taxpayers take the hit. If the government borrows the money, then that absorbs saving that could have gone into productive investment. So you and I pay in lower productivity today, and future taxpayers are still on the hook later. And finally, if the government convinces the Federal Reserve to print more money to pay for it, as they did for the COVID stimulus checks, then money holders throughout the economy pay for it in inflation, with each dollar now going less far than before. In all three of these cases, what we have is a transfer from broad segments of the economy, taxpayers, consumers, or money holders, to benefit a relatively narrow segment. And the average student loan borrower is already in a much better position than the average taxpayer, consumer, or money holder. Even if borrowers have lots of debt, that education is still a valuable asset. And when you consider the value of that education in terms of the income boost it gets them, student loan forgiveness turns out to be a transfer of wealth away from a relatively poorer segment toward a relatively richer segment, exactly the opposite of what government transfers are usually supposed to do. Now let's talk about the dynamics. A simple transfer is one thing, but people don't stand still when you change their incentives. So what kind of behavior does loan forgiveness reward or punish? Well, students who paid back their loans already don't see any kind of benefit from this policy. The people who benefit the most are people who put off paying back their loans as long as possible. Now, one important principle in economics is that if you incentivize something, you get more of it. In this case, student loan forgiveness can incentivize more borrowing in anticipation of future forgiveness programs and discourage loan repayment. And as we saw during the 2008 financial crisis, when borrowers and lenders expect to be protected from the consequences of mistakes, you get a lot more mistakes. Now, college does do lots of things besides just making you more productive. Personal growth and expanding your horizons are important. And beyond that, college is fun. And of course, it might make sense for taxpayers to invest in people being more productive, since that potentially benefits everyone. But does it make sense for taxpayers to be on the hook for all these other things, as great as they are? What the Student Loan Forgiveness Program does is it incentivizes students to think of college less as a productive investment that benefits everyone, and more as a private consumption good that just benefits the student. So ultimately, it's hard to see much benefit to student loan forgiveness, either from a static or a dynamic perspective. Not only is it a transfer from relatively poorer to relatively richer people, but it also incentivizes unproductive behavior in a variety of ways that, far from solving a crisis, likely sets us up for another crisis in the future. If you're interested in learning more about the economy, policy analysis, or public finance, check out the Department of Accounting, Economics, and Finance at SUNY Brockport.